Hello everyone, I'm Christina McCauley. And I'm Kyle Kittleson. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Orange Slices. We have a great show lined up for you with some really fun slices. That's right, slices of life featuring the fantastic people, places, and things that make Orange County such a great place to live. But Kyle, I understand you're also going to be talking some trash. True, there will be trash talk, but good trash talk. Not enough people appreciate how far cities go to take care of everyone's trash. So, we're riding along with the Midway City Sanitary District. And by we, you mean you. You get to do the dirty work and we get to hear all about it. Thanks, Kyle. I don't think I completely thought this through before taking this assignment. Well, you'll be fine. Bring hand sanitizer and maybe some boots and gloves, coveralls. Bagpipes. How are bagpipes going to help you with your trash story? Oh, they won't. I'm just <laughs> moving away from the trash story and right along to our next story. You're going to meet a Fountain Valley man who shares his bagpiping talent to help others in their time of need. I love bagpipes. Sounds great. But first, we're going to spice things up with a young entrepreneur who's making it big with his recipe for awesome sauce. And this amazing sauce isn't even the best part of the story. Mm. I'm heading over to Huntington Beach to catch up with my friend, Julie. You know, if you think about the number of different kinds of sauces on the market, you know it would have to be an exceptional recipe to be a success. But as Kyle shows us, the real story is the exceptional young man behind the sauce. In his earliest years, Julian Ukar was on target for every childhood benchmark. But by the age of three, he was diagnosed with severe learning disabilities. The family was told he would never be able to hold a job or live independently. This was devastating news. It left his parents asking questions as they desperately tried to help their son. Ultimately, however, they rejected the label given to Julian and found ways to cope and thrive. We didn't want to focus on what he cannot do, we want to focus on what he can do. So from the moment that we had that realization, we started thinking about his future and what he can do and what he's capable of and really what he can build a sustainable future for himself. I always love eating and cooking in the kitchen. So you go ahead and get the lettuce going. So I started watching what, what he did in our kitchen. And really what he was really good at was making the sauce. So he would add to my spaghetti sauce. He would always dress the salad. And so we started talking about the sauces that he makes in our kitchen and what we could do with that. And awesome sauce was born. With the help of his family and his home kitchen, Julian found a positive and productive way to take on the extraordinary challenges of autism. We tested in our kitchen. We tested all summer long, kept notes of, of how much we put in what sauce and, and tested on food. We had a taste test, remember the taste test at yeah, our house? Yeah, taste test. So we had about 75 people cleared out the house and we just had taste test with comment cards and everybody came and ate. Left us yeah, comments. Yeah, like, tried the like steaks, the salad. Yep, they tried everything. So we usually marinate um, overnight if we can, but at least a couple hours. That's good, buddy. After extensive research and more taste testings, the recipes were complete and the sauces received FDA approval. We spelled awesome with a U so that we combined the word autism and awesome together. All of our verbiage is words that we've heard throughout our life and throughout going to appointments and doctors. So this is a nonverbal herbal. Off the charts also, just going to doctors and you hear a lot of times that they're not on the chart, they're below the chart, they're off the chart. So this is something, go ahead and put the lettuce in there, buddy. Again, just play on words. This is my awesome sauce label. Today, people don't put a label on Julian. He's an entrepreneur who's created his own label. Beyond their own dinner table, Julian's awesome sauce reaches a wide audience online. 
Julian helps his mother carefully package the bottles to be sent throughout the country. He includes a personally signed card in every shipment. The sauces are also sold in local grocery stores. To ensure the sauces are the finest quality and packaged to perfection, Julian works with a local manufacturer. He mixes and measures the ingredients until the recipe is, of course, awesome. Julian is the manufacturer's youngest client. I was uh, approached to help him develop the sauce and formulate it. So when he came, basically I was excited to be a part of his uh, endeavor and also a part of his success. So we have, as a team, I was able to show him how to formulate the sauce and measure it and be diligently mixing it together and come to, to have a, a final awesome Julian sauce. What do you think? Good? Yeah, it's good. You feel like a celebrity, isn't it? Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Julian's Awesome Sauce found another home at the Ways and Means Oyster House in Huntington Beach's Pacific City. As a restaurant employee, Julian shows up weekly to mix his sauces, which are then used in two of the restaurant's popular dishes. He works back in the kitchen with the, uh, the cooks. He lays out all his ingredients and he mixes up his sauces and that's what we'll use for that week in the um, steak and potatoes and the tri-colored cauliflower. Um, the chefs love working with them. He loves their music. He always says he loves their music in the kitchen. He's just a fun person to have around. He's always smiling. He's quite a celebrity. We all love Julian. With Julian in mind, the restaurant gives back to the community as well by helping younger students with special needs. For every steak and potatoes or cauliflower that we sell, we give a dollar back to the New Vista School where Julian used to go to school. What does it feel like to know that customers enjoy his awesome sauce? Happy. They're in my food and very like joyful. After high school, Julian decided to study what else? The culinary arts. With assistance, he's conquering challenges and doing well in his classes at Orange Coast College. There is a lot to learn. This is the essence of teamwork. I'm gonna do classes like hospitality and safety and sanitation. And then I'm working for like culinary arts there. Happiness and smiles come easily to Julian. There is no stopping Julian's positive outlook. His mom says it best. I personally feel like more people need to be like Julian. He's always smiling, he's always happy, does not get upset very often. If he does, it's a couple minutes and he works through it and he's happy again. Literally every day. How'd you sleep last night, Julian? Mom, it was the best night ever. Every night, every night's a great night. Despite their struggles, the Ukar household is a happy one. The family embraces shared goals, adventure, travel. Really our motto is find your awesome. So it takes a while and it's, it's a lot of work, but eventually we really feel like with each child you can find something awesome about them. Julian and his sister, Isabel, are great pals too. Julian and I really like to go to the beach together. We go and we hang out in the sand, play volleyball, boogie board, um, and we also like to ski together. Isabel supports her brother's burgeoning business. I think the sauce is delicious. We have it probably like three times a week for dinner, so I think it's really good and a lot of my friends really seem to like it too. The business is awesome. I think it's such a good idea. It helps so many people. and. I just hope it like grows and can eventually help other people. Living a full, active life is second nature for this family. From surfing at the beach to skiing in the mountains, they are on the move together. I like to go skiing with my family at Snow Summit and Big Bear. Every Friday night, we eat dinner at the base of the hill and we drive up there at nighttime and next day I go ski. On Sundays, I compete in races and win medals for the <laughs> fastest times. Lots of people cheer for Julian in his journey to independence and success. The family hopes that Julian's awesome sauce business will benefit others too. 
our dream for someday is to employ other young adults with special needs. So whether that is a internet business where we're shipping out tons of sauce, whether it's um, a storefront where we can sell the sauce, our, our dream is to employ other young adults with special needs. You can read Julian's story and find out about his awesome sauce and other products on his website at julensawesomesauce.com. Awesome story, Kyle. And we wish Julian continued success with his awesome sauce. For our next slice, Kyle introduces us to a Fountain Valley man with a passion for bagpipes. Playing bagpipes in the Scottish countryside is a lifelong dream of Greg Elliott. But he's happy to practice here along the Santa Ana Riverbed, far enough away from his Fountain Valley neighbors just in case. No one ever kind of liked the bagpipes. Bagpipes are like being pregnant. You are or you aren't. You like it or you don't. It's a hobby that requires daily practice. So every day he hops in his 1928 Model T custom hot rod, which is another hobby altogether. Then he plays for an audience of one, his faithful dog Bentley. It's actually a hobby he picked up later in life. Long before bagpipes, his passion was running. I grew up in Culver City, and I used to run from Culver City down to Santa Monica, which was, I don't know, eight, nine miles. And you'd body surf all day, and if one of my friends was heading back, I'd hitch a ride, if not, I'd run home. He became second in the nation in cross country and was the youngest runner invited to train with the world's fastest mile runner, John Landy, for a big race at the LA Coliseum. Greg was beating Landy in the workouts, but just before the big race, he was disqualified when they found out his age. A couple of days before the race, they called my father and said, oh, we just found out he's only 17. He can't run in the Coliseum. And that's what put me over the edge. Instead of taking my scholarships, which I had to anywhere I wanted to go, I showed them, I joined the Marine Corps. So off he went to the Marines, passing up scholarships and leaving his running career in the dust. But soon, he found passion for a new hobby, scuba diving. I've always loved the ocean, and we had a Navy diver in our brig on the aircraft carrier. And he wasn't going anywhere. He was on the other side of the bars, and I was guarding him. And we started talking about diving, and um, he told me how easy it was. And of course, I already knew because I watched Sea Hunt on TV. So I bought all of his gear from his buddies when I got off at 8 in the morning, and I had the day off. I put it all on, drove down to the ocean, and went in the water. And by some miracle, I lived. Not only did Greg lack any kind of training, but back in the day, scuba diving wasn't nearly as safe. And in those days, there were no BCs that you inflated. There were no gauges. There was nothing to tell you when you were running out of air. And you had to kind of sense those things. You had to be a much better diver than today. He traveled the world, serving his country and diving any chance he could. I went to uh, Hawaii first, then Japan, Hong Kong, Okinawa, the Philippines, uh, dove everywhere I get. Had no idea what the dive site was. It was all just, and that was the adventure of it. It was fun. After the Marines, he became a sea captain for charter dive boats, including the Golden Doubloon owned by famous treasure hunter Mel Fisher. He was the dive advisor for the movie Naked Gun Two and a Half with actors Leslie Nielsen and George Kennedy. And then there was diving with sharks. The dive boat began offering shark expeditions or shark tourism, sometimes from the safety of a cage, sometimes not. So it wasn't until his late 40s that he decided to take on the bagpipes. He started taking lessons and caught on quickly. Experts say it takes a good eight years to become a skilled bagpiper. It took Greg only one. His natural talent may have something to do with his deep Scottish heritage. My last name is Elliot, and Elliot is the only 
the only clan that is only one family. And we don't know why that is, but I don't want to research it too much. My story is we're special. The plaid of a bagpiper's kilt, or tartan, is unique to each clan. Greg has four different kinds, representing his family, two other bagpipe groups he's belonged to, but it's the fourth one he holds in the highest esteem. The only group ever awarded a clan and a tartan outside of Scotland was the United States Marine Corps. Oorah, Semper Fi. Greg has since retired and now spends his time practicing and working on his hot rod. He keeps busy by performing free of charge at funerals for anyone in the armed forces, fire service, or law enforcement. His greatest honor was being invited to play in New York after 9-11. We had already put our pipes away before dinner, but we're dressed like this. And out in front of the hotel, there's this older, big Scot, and there's about 10 pipers and a couple drummers. And he stops me and my buddy, he says, excuse me, lad. He says, but are you pipers? And I said, uh, in my best accent I could fake, I said, aye, that we are. <laughs> they soon found themselves in an impromptu parade. He called out a couple tunes. He marched us right across Times Square. I don't mean in a crosswalk. Right across the street at 9 o'clock on a Saturday night. All the cars screeched to a stop. Nobody honked. And we saw two cops coming. And I thought, oh, here we go. I, I thought we'd last longer than this. And they stopped traffic and gave us the thumbs up. We played in every bar and every firehouse. Wherever he's needed, he's there to share the ageless melodies of the bagpipes. And if you're ever in the area of the Santa Ana River Trail near Fountain Valley, Greg and Bentley welcome you to join them. last slice, Kyle is ready to get his hands dirty and talk some trash. Let's head over to the Midway City Sanitary District. Taking care of waste efficiently and effectively is a big job. And the Midway City Sanitary District diligently works to make sure the residents of Westminster are well served. Midway City Sanitary District, we actually do solid waste collections, both um, black cart, which is trash, and blue cart, which is recyclable, which 75% of all trash is recyclable. Um, we also do sewer collections. We're the ones responsible for cleaning all the sewer mains within Westminster and Midway City, um, all 170 miles of them. One of the biggest challenges is educating people that almost everything is recyclable. Hi, this is Midway City Sanitary District. This is Julia. How may I help you today? Midway City Sanitary District, we try to push the blues. We want everybody to recycle as much as possible. So we remind the callers when they call not to use the black can for household refuge, to please use almost everything is recyclable. All the paper, plastic, metal, and glass, even dirty, can go into the blue container because many people will just take their kitchen trash and put it in the black and it should be in the blue most of it. Here at the district, we are promoting Pushing the Blues program, which starts at an early age. So we're going into schools and teaching them at an early age on what's recyclable and what's not. It's plastic, styrofoam. So right now we're coming up to a black can here that has a lot of recyclable materials in there. And here in Midway City Sanitary District, we want to recycle properly. It's costing us about a half a million dollars a year for people not placing the cardboard and the paper and foam, cups, in the right container. And it's really hindering and it could cause us to raise rates. And so we need people to start recycling properly, putting the stuff in the proper can in order to keep the rates as low as we have them. 
The district provides residents with an updated list of everything that is recyclable. Anything that goes into the black carts must be processed at a substantial cost. So, the more items that go into the blue containers, the more money the district saves, so rates can stay low. The sanitary district also has a group of dedicated workers who take pride in maintaining sewer maintenance throughout the city. Today we're doing routine maintenance. Uh, we're at it every day, cleaning uh, every line in the city. It takes us about a year to accomplish that, and uh, here we are today doing this line. Uh, this is just where we ended up. And as we go, we start from Ward, and we end up all the way to Bolsa Chica. So, uh, and we clean every single line. This turns on my rotter, which will, help, which will uh, put high pressure water through the hose to the nozzle. And what that does is that cleans the entire pipe. And when I bring it back, bring it back pretty slow, that way when you're cleaning everything, you also bring with you whatever you broke off of the pipe. And then, and then just bring it all the way back. It gets into this manhole. If there's a lot of stuff like debris or grease and stuff like that, we have plenty of tools to break that stuff up and also to retrieve it from our, from our system. What's the one big troublemaker in sewer lines? Grease. Cooking grease, you know, any kind of grease that you're cooking in your kitchen. You pour it down your sink, what will happen is it will harden and it'll actually form the shape of our pipes, which will block the flow of, of the sewage. And if that happens, then what you have is you have a, uh, an SSO or a sewer system overflow that, you know, which is gonna have sewage coming out into the streets, which nobody wants. If there's one thing that I would like to tell residents, it's that in your bathroom, if you would just put whatever comes out of you in the toilet and toilet paper, that would be excellent. And in your kitchen, if whatever you're cooking, all the grease, if you could put it into a container, such as a coffee can or something similar, and then throw it away in the appropriate uh, can, that would be excellent. The district's board works tirelessly to ensure that rates stay the lowest in the county while still providing outstanding service to customers. We have two programs that I especially am proud of, and one is the Helping Hands program, which gives assistance to the people who are unable to take their bales out to the curb. Our driver gets out of the truck, goes in wherever they're stored, and brings them out, empties them, and puts them back. To me, that is a great service to our people. Another program that I think is wonderful is the Bulky Item Program. You can call in on the day that your solid waste is picked up and we will pick up those items at no cost. And residents are pleased as well. We have uh, no debt. Uh, this district has done well financially. I'm proud of it. And that's the way I treat my, my constituents because uh, they're like a family to me. Like brothers and sisters, you know, how you get along with the family? Well, that's what you do as a, serv as a servant. You have to uh, understand your residents. Because of a well-managed budget and foresight, the district was able to buy a new fleet with all cash. We have a new fleet. We have 10 trucks, uh, saw waste trucks. They're all automation, side loaders. Uh, they run on CNG, compressed natural gas. It's good for the environment. They're a lot quieter versus diesels, um, and it's less expensive, and it's easier to maintain as well. The district hopes to implement even more innovative programs and services for the city, and every person in Westminster can play a part in its success. Due to dedicated employees, we're able to keep rates low. Um, Solid Waste Department has, um, we have 10 trucks with eight drivers, and we also have, um, a great recycling program, but we need your help. Right now we are losing about $500,000 per year uh, in recyclables that are going into the black can that we are getting charged for. So with your help, we can maintain the rates and be the lowest around for years to come if you choose to recycle properly. Reduce, reuse, recycle. 
To find out more details on how you can participate in effective ways to help, visit the Midway City Sanitary District's website at MidwayCitySanitaryDistrict.com. Hey, Kyle. Hey! Nice trash talk. Oh, well, you know, I try to keep it clean. Uh, and guess what? I learned how to play the bagpipes. You did? Wow, that's impressive. Wait, you really did? I did not. Uh, I couldn't do what Greg did. It would have taken me much longer than a year. Yeah, Greg is pretty amazing. And Julian, uh, love that guy. Well, that is the best part of this job. We get to know some terrific people and tell their stories. And I do have something for you. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Awesome shirt. Wow. Look at this. Find your awesome. Kyle, you're awesome. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> and that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Orange Slices. Remember, if you have an idea about a person, place, or thing that would make a great slice, let us know. Find our Orange Slices page on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Kyle Kittleson. And I'm Christina McCauley. Bye. Hello, everyone. <laughs> There's a mosquito. And tell their stories. And I have something for you. Awesome sauce. Awesome T -shirt. sauce. Wow. And find <laughs> somewhere in there. Find it. You're awesome. Awesome story, Kyle. Did you hear my stomach growl? <laughs> I went, well. That time of day. For real though, I dropped a bottle of that <laughs> right over there. And uh, that really happened. That really happened. This isn't happened. like one of those like, make something up that's funny. Oh, poor Julian. It smelled good. No wonder my stomach always growls. Oh, that's why your stomach like, was growling. Mm, awesome sauce, where is it? Remember the time you dropped the awesome sauce? I would have to have caught the awesome sauce in order to have dropped it. Instead, <laughs> I was just like, oh. You know, like. He threw, threw the it sauce. On the ground. You can follow me on Instagram yes. at Kyle Kittleson. <laughs> I have 11,000 followers. Because he's very popular. I'm, I'm very. I'm called a micro influencer. And he doesn't um, Google himself ever. Mm -mm. <laughs> and I do not read the comments. No. Yeah. We're I read the comments. Delete. And delete. I, them <laughs> I do have a. Um, a Google alert on myself. Do you? Of yeah. course you do. And sometimes a Kyle Kittleson, the psychiatrist in Minnesota, pops up <laughs> to my email. It's all starting to make oh. perfect sense. I'm 32 as of a month ago today, I turned 32. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. birthday. Feliz cumpleaños! So I'm 32. younger than Kim Kardashian. Way, yeah. Right? Yeah. But I have gray hair. Silver Fox. It looks great, I think. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yeah. I was going to say something, but I didn't want you to have to go back to your therapist. So. <laughs> I like the little bit of silver, a little sprinkle. To your therapist, uh. today, 